Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to the 45th lecture. So, we have been discussing about the gyroscope. So, actually our ultimate aim is to get into the reaction wheels and control moment gyros. So, control moment gyros are used for controlling the attitude of the spacecraft or the satellite while the gyroscope itself it is a device which can be used for measuring the angular displacement and then the angular rates. So, uh, in that context, we have been trying to before going into the entering into the reaction wheels and uh, the control moment gyros, we are trying to enter into this gyroscope, how does it work and already we have looked into the rigid body dynamics of, of a cylinder uh, which was a symmetrical case. It can be unsymmetrical also, but uh, here the gyroscope it consists of a um, consists of two frames as we have discussed earlier that uh, it consists of two frames one the outer frame and the another will be the inner frame which we have. So, this is on the gimbal here and then you have another frame which is inside this ok and then we have another frame then there is a wheel attached to this and this is also a gimbal. So, these are the gimbal points. So, why we were discussing that uh, we wanted to look into the behavior of the system which is nothing but a top ok playing top. So, it is uh, pivoted here about uh, with a ball socket joint and then it is uh, displaced from the vertical by theta angle and spinning about this by angle phi and then we draw it uh, we drew it on the right hand side the last time it does not matter whether it is on the right hand or the left hand side. So, to understand the behavior of this system we were looking into this ok, because this system and this system they do not differ much. Here if we assume this to be massless these two frames we are assuming to be massless ok and therefore, this moment of inertia it is a getting ignored and we are just concentrating on this wheel ok. So, this wheel will be have rotation because of the rotation about this axis because of rotation about this axis. So, it is a anti clockwise rotation here. So, theta dot here we have written psi dot here and then it is rotating on this axis itself is spinning. So, which we have written as phi dot. So, overall the behavior of this system it will appear to be the same as the behavior of this system. So, behavior of this system means without the frame mass these two frames are this and these two frames they are massless ok. So, understanding this it will help me in solving this particular problem and here we instead of taking the reference frame at the center of mass I can choose the reference frame here in this place ok and we can write here as x y and this is the z axis ok and we know that this is spinning here ok spinning on this axis as it is shown by this arrow, but as in the gyroscope last time we have discussed that uh, this x axis which is here and the y axis which is going here in this direction and the small z axis which is here ok. So, this is not spinning along with the disc similarly here in this case this x and y they are not spinning along with this one, but it is a 
nutating and this axis is nutating and this axis is also processing and this is because of the symmetry okay so in that context we derived certain equations and those equations once we use it so it will give us the result we are looking for so we derived the total moment acting about the x axis so this was minus i times psi double dot sin theta so this was one of the equation the second equation we have written okay now let us consider a very simplified situation before we go into the actual problem okay so in the simplified problem what we are looking for that the under what condition what condition theta dot will be zero means theta is a constant psi dot this is a constant and phi dot this is also a constant so we have to find out the torque condition basically from this so let us explore this so if we look here in the first equation so if your theta is constant so this implies theta dot this will be zero and also theta double dot this will also be zero because it's a constant all the time so you can look that because theta dot is present here and theta dot is also present here so this term will drop out this is dot here so this term will drop out and okay this term drops out and this term also drops out leaving out only the first term that means emx will be equal to minus i times psi double dot sin theta so this term is going out because of theta dot equal to 0 this term also gets deleted if we look here in this part so emz this quantity i0 d by dt phi dot psi dot so here as per our original problem we wanted to solve this problem so along this axis no moment is acting this is the vertical axis we have written this as the capital z axis so this is capital x this is capital y and with respect to this your x y and z from if your uh, this cone is on the right hand side so we can show it like this this is the small z axis and the x and the y axis is here the small x and x small y axis this angle is theta okay. so with the vertical this x axis x axis also that makes uh, angle theta so we get one equation here if we look here in this so from there we will have emy <coughs> now uh, again okay one more thing uh, here psi double dot this is also zero uh, psi dot is constant because this condition we have not yet taken psi dot is constant we are assuming here a simplified for problem so psi dot is constant and phi dot is also a constant so that means this term should also vanish so that means 
this simply implies. So, from here we can write on this side this implies psi double dot this equal to 0, this implies theta dot equal to 0 and theta double dot this is also 0 and this implies phi double dot this will be equal to 0. So, therefore, in the first equation all the terms they drop out. So, this becomes simply 0. Thereafter, we pick up the second equation here theta double dot this will be 0, but this term is not 0 and here if we see all these terms are present. Okay. So, this becomes i times minus sign we will have to put here minus i times psi dot square sin theta cos theta sin theta cos theta and then from this place i 0 psi dot Okay. Now, here in this part if we look phi dot is a constant, okay. psi dot is a constant as shown here, psi dot is a constant, phi dot is a constant and theta is also a constant as per our assumption. So, this part, so this implies that phi dot plus psi dot cos theta this is also a constant and therefore, derivative time derivative of this will be 0. So, this implies E m z this is also 0. So, the condition we were looking for that phi dot equal to a constant and psi dot this is equal to a constant and theta this is equal to a constant leads to the condition that E m x this should be 0 and E m z this should also be equal to 0 and what is non zero is E m y and that E m y is written here in this place this is the net torque on the along the y axis minus i times psi dot square. So, uh, we will take it on the next page minus i times psi dot square sin theta into cos theta sin theta into cos theta plus i 0 psi dot sin theta plus i 0 psi dot sin theta and times phi dot plus psi dot cos theta until this particular part. We can rearrange it. Okay. So, uh, from here then we get the desired solution. Okay. So, the our solution will be E m y means the what is required that torque along x axis should be 0. Remember this is the body axis which is nutating and processing x axis. So, here in this case because theta dot equal to 0, okay, theta is a constant. So, no nutation rate, no nutation rate, but nutation angle is present okay. and this is torque along the z axis, all these are the body axis. Okay, so, if we rearrange it, so we can write here as this quantity is nothing but your omega z. Okay, so, we can write it in a simple way i 0 times psi dot omega z times sin theta minus i times psi dot square sin theta into cos theta. So, this is the amount of torque required you can see that theta is a constant here okay, only psi dot and phi dot which has gone into this omega z. So, phi dot these two quantities are present. Now, we can do little bit more simplification to this. Let 
let us assume that em y is also 0. Okay. One more condition we impose, already th the three conditions we have imposed and one more condition we, we are imposing e m y is 0. So, what does this mean? Already you have no torque along the x axis, no tor torque along the z axis, no torque along the y axis. So, then this gets simplified to a situation we have been discussing for the rigid body dynamics which is torque, torque free uh, rotational motion of the rigid body. Okay. This problem we have already discussed. So, let us look into this problem psi dot square sin theta into cos theta. We will separate out the phi dot term okay, and psi dot term and write the equation correspondingly. So, this is I 0 psi dot A square sin theta cos theta psi dot A square sin theta cos theta plus I 0 psi dot phi dot sin theta on the right hand side sin theta times cos theta. And what we are interested in, uh, let us first take uh, psi dot on the, these terms we are going to rearrange. Okay. So, we will write this as I 0 psi dot phi dot sin theta this equal to I minus I 0 psi dot a square sin theta into cos theta. Okay, because psi dot is non zero, psi dot this quantity is non zero, okay. and theta also the theta which is present here. So, th this is on the both hand side. Okay. So, theta is non zero. So, in that case, we can put it like this times i 0 times phi dot this equal to i minus i 0 psi dot cos theta. So, this implies psi dot equal to i 0 divided by i minus i 0 times phi dot divided by cos theta. means the equation we have got here this is psi dot equal to i 0 divided by i minus i 0. And this is exactly the expression we got for the three body uh, so what we have got uh, for the torque free rotational dynamics of of a cylinder or either disc ok. So, through this route also what we are getting that the same result for the rotational motion of a cylinder or a disc which is free from torque you will get psi dot equal to this quantity the expression which is written here which we are getting through some indirect route. Okay. So, the same problem it can be solved in multiple ways. Now, we are interested in that if we spare it that E m y is not equal to 0. So, in that case only and these conditions they apply. So, we will have to apply this much of torque along the y axis to maintain the motion. Okay. 
so to maintain the motion with theta dot equal to 0 or theta equal to a constant and uh, psi dot this is a constant and phi dot also this is a constant. So, under this assumption what we are getting m x equal to 0, m z equal to 0 and m y is given by this expression which is written here in this place. So, i 0 times psi dot omega z psi dot omega z is phi dot plus psi dot cos theta this part and then sin th multiplied by sin theta minus i dot i times psi dot square sin theta cos theta psi dot square sin theta cos theta. Now, let us look into a limiting case. if theta equal to 90 degree. Okay, so, in that case what result we get? Okay, so, for theta equal to 90 degree cos theta will be equal to 0 and sin theta is equal to 1. Okay, so, we get m y equal to i 0 times psi dot times phi dot this part will be 0 sin theta becomes equal to 1. So, on the other part we have i times psi dot sin theta is 1, but cos theta becomes 0. So, this part other part is also 0. So, what we get i 0 psi dot times phi dot. So, when the disk of the gyro is making theta equal to 90 degree. So, at that time the torque required to maintain the motion along the y axis will be given by i 0 psi dot phi dot. Now, we are ready to uh, take the original problem, we wanted to discuss about this problem. Okay. So, now we are in a position that we can discuss about this problem. So, this way you need to uh, analyze all the problems. So, for our present case, okay, uh, there are few more things before we go into that, we will uh, discuss about. So, your omega is minus psi dot sin theta times theta dot see if, uh, omega the equation it is a, a long equation we have written. So, under the assumption that theta dot this equal to 0 and psi dot this is a constant and phi dot this is also a constant. So, I am exploring the same issue from the other perspective and it is important that we take care of all these things and basically we are trying to learn here. Okay. So, we should look into all the angles, okay. so we should look through all the angles. So, here we have the omega we have written earlier derived 
one particular equation which is omega equal to minus psi dot sin theta i cap plus theta times j cap so when your theta dot equal to 0 okay here this is theta dot so this term will drop out so this term becomes 0 and omega gets reduced to minus psi dot sin theta i cap plus theta dot j cap okay. this part is gone plus phi dot plus psi dot cos theta times k cap this is omega and similarly the h 0 vector then what we have written earlier so that gets reduced to h 0 we have written as minus i times psi dot sin theta times i cap plus i 0 times basically multiplying this by i this by i and this so here because theta dot is 0 so th this particular j term will drop out here also so what we get here i times i dot sin theta times i cap plus i 0 i dot plus i dot cos theta times k cap ok and there are few other things that we also need to look into and capital omega this term is minus psi dot sin theta i cap plus psi dot cos theta k cap capital omega we have written by the equation minus sin dot there was one more term which was theta dot times j cap so this term this drops out because of this condition and we get only this term so this is your angular velocity of the frame okay. not the angular velocity of the disc this is the angular velocity of the frame and uh, this is the angular velocity of the disc or the cylinder cylinder slash disc ok if we look for the momentum component along the capital Z axis so what we need to do just we need to take the dot product of this with respect to capital K and that will give you the momentum component along the z axis. Okay, so uh, few more things we can write here. If you look here in this equation, the angular momentum equation, i is a constant, psi dot is a constant, theta is a constant, i zero is a constant, phi dot this is a constant. All these are constant. Therefore, this implies that h zero magnitude this is also going to be a constant. Okay, what else we can do here further? This also implies
we have i dot sin theta this is a constant and already we have written i 0 times omega z which is equal to phi dot plus psi dot cos theta this is also a constant okay. therefore d is 0 by d t with respect to the body axis. Okay. So, your h vector is constant and therefore, this quantity this becomes 0. So, what is left in the equation E m this we have written as d h 0 by d t with respect to the body axis plus capital omega cross h 0. So, here this part this drops out under the condition we have mentioned where theta is a constant phi dot is a constant and psi dot is also a constant. Okay. So, you see that the situation gets simplified to capital omega cross h 0. Okay. Moreover, in this problem, uh, where the cone is tilted like this, this axis is making theta angle with this one and here your x axis and y axis are directed, this is capital X, capital Y, capital Z, this is a small z here. So, we can see from this place that E capital M z this quantity is 0, because your m g this is acting just downward. Okay. There is a torque about this axis. So, if we assume that the situation is something like this, this is the z axis and x axis is going down like this. With respect to this capital Z axis, the small z axis is tilted, and with the horizontal, then your x axis is making angle theta. Okay. So, under that situation, you can see somewhere on this, somewhere mg force is acting, and because of that, you get a torque here in this place. So, this torque will be directed along the y axis, which is going inside the plane of the paper. Okay, so, this quantity is 0. Similarly, we do not have torque along this axis. So, here no torque along this axis also no torque. Okay. So, the torque is acting along the y axis. So, E m small z this quantity also is 0 and you can solve for this. So, if we try to work it out so, E m z this equation we have written as i 0 d by d t phi dot plus psi dot cos theta. So, if this quantity is 0 from this place this particular one this is along the z body axis. So, this implies that phi dot plus psi dot cos theta this will be a constant. And let us assume that phi plus psi dot cos theta this quantity we write as uh, we can give some name to this. Let us say this uh, we write as beta. So, this is the one relationship we are having. This simply says that along the z axis your component of angular velocity along the z axis this remains constant. This is simply it implies. So, component of component of angular velocity along the z axis is constant. So, it is not changing.
Okay, so we will continue looking into uh, this uh, particular topic, uh, still uh, lot more has to be done. So, we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you very much.